Hello, we are currently on my bathroom floor. Little Miss here just, you know what? She cannot control what goes out of her body currently. So we are leaking everywhere. And so we get extra baths and extra biscuits. It's little girl. So we all know that this is Markup Brita Filter. If you don't, now you know. She is named after her uh, doppelganger, reverse doppelganger, coupon and faucet. She's just a conventionally attractive beige girl. But since we brought her in Saturday, I noticed that her breathing was a bit labored and kind of, it almost seems like she's, she's not gasping for breath, but it almost seems like she's not taking a full breath in. And sometimes with upper respiratory infections, when their nose is clogged and their mouth breathing, yes, that can be what it is, but this just seems something different. So today, little Goyle and I are gonna make our way to the vet and we're gonna get her hopefully some stronger antibiotics to maybe help kick this a little faster and then take a look-see as to why you breathe in so hard when you have all the air you could possibly want. Oh, and she also was so constipated we had to give her an enema yesterday. Here's the wonderful picture of the beautiful artwork she left in my bathtub. Yeah, you did. So we're gonna make our way to the vet. I get to take the Prius today to take little Goyle to the vet uh, because <laughs> my brakes were being all squeaky and I asked my partner to look at them and he changed the brakes. But while he was doing that, he discovered that my tire had a slit in it basically around the entire tire that could have blown at any minute. So my my vehicle is getting new tires today. So we are riding in this energy efficient, I don't know what I was gonna go with that. What? I'm sorry. For a girl who's not breathing well, she sure has some great lung capacity. You know what I'm saying? We have a very, oh, thank you for that. A very upset girly. I'm sorry. This is for the best. I promise. I love you. No promises, but I'm gonna try to film a little bit while we're in there, even if I don't like show faces, <laughs> because sometimes the vets do a really good job of explaining things, and I'm like, well, they kind of said things and stuff, and then I interpret it how I want. So or how my brain will interpret things. I'll give it our best shot. I'm, I'm thinking they're gonna wanna run a few tests on her. My guess is gonna be they're gonna wanna combo test her, which means test her for FIV and FELV. They're probably gonna wanna run blood work on her, although she does not have a lot of blood to give, so that may or may not happen. And then they probably will wanna take an X-ray of her chest, which is fine. All is fine. But those are gonna be my predictions. But we shall see. We'll see. You think? No. Oh, please don't poop in the carrier. Girly, come here. You can be free. Did you poop in your carrier? I specifically asked you not to poop in your carrier. Thank you. So kind. <laughs> come here. This is a different vet's office than our normal vet's office because all of our vets are literally out of town this week. So you get the special treatment. <laughs> you just look so grunge. So grunge. So, um, come here. Don't you dare. You are too small. You can't make that jump. If you would stop moving. So she's a mess, that's not our fault. Oh, <laughs> poor baby. Okay, well, let me grab my schedule fast um, and we'll get started. Any other concerns other than the, bre the breathing right now? Um, she, I, I did an in-house fecal. She has coccidia rattling her lungs. 
Um, all the treated for fleas, treated yeah. Okay. She's currently on amoxicillin for an upper respiratory infection. Yes. It's all that our other bed has. They okay. don't have any clavamox. If okay. you want to put her on something stronger, I'm down for any testing. I just want to know what's going on. Okay. Perfect. If it sounds great. She's so sweet, but she's so what good. What you doing? No, she. I'm cute. She's got that kind of. And I know blush. it. Yeah. You precious. You are. And have her third eyelids kind of just been protruding mm -hmm. up like that since mm -hmm. she got her. I and know. I think she's pretty anemic. Yeah, I'm wondering. She's pretty anemic. Yeah, keep looking. And that could be the breathing, honestly. Really? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I know. Yeah, she definitely got some little wheezes in there. Could be a URR, a respiratory infection. Mm -hmm. um, could be a little bit of maybe pneumonia. Um, I'm suspicious of it given her third eyelid protrusion. Sometimes I see that. Um, I also will see the crusties and things like that on their eyes and I'm a little seen. I just, the way that she was breathing, we had a kitten uh -huh. like two years ago that was breathing like that and he okay. had a diaphragmatic hernia. Okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah, I was just, no, like, they don't usually breathe that heavy, yeah. even if they're recovering. Yeah, I can always take some x-rays today if you would want I'm me to. That. Okay, totally we can do that. that. I'd rather rule it out yeah. than worry. Okay, we can do that. So that'll help me determine the diaphragmatic hernia, and then it'll also tell me kind of what lung pattern I'm seeing, mm -hmm. whether or not it's something, pneumonia or whatever. Okay, so if you're good with that, I can take some of those. And today. do you want to run any, she probably doesn't have a lot of blood to spare. I know. But if there's any blood tests you want to run, okay. that's part of any. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take her in the back with me, um, and we'll do those X-rays. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, ready? Let's go see everybody. Ellie wants to see you. I'm sure. I went very well, so I'm sure you heard. They're gonna take her back, do some X-rays. I'd rather just rule it out rather than worry about could it be or could it not be. But it could also be just she's just incredibly anemic, and we need to start her on some more B12 support. Maybe get her some chicken liver and have that mixed into her baby food. She'll love that. Ugh. <laughs> and then uh, hopefully get her on the right road to recovery. I will say one of the more annoying parts about having a Siamese kitten in the rescue is just how quick we get adoption applications. And I don't care if that kitten was an all black cat. I don't care if that kitten was the ugliest kitten to ever exist. I would do all the same things to ensure that that kitten was healthy. It's just, it's kind of funny to me, just how quickly people are interested in a Siamese versus an all black kitty. And meanwhile, I'm just very worried about the kitten making it through, you know, quarantine and being able to be adopted, but rather than just, oh yeah, we found her a home, I hope she lives, you know. Anyway, just a thought. It's our x-ray queen. Yeah. Yeah, I know, so hot. I'm gonna be free, and I hear that, and I appreciate that, but little girl is nothing happy. They suspect FIP, which, I mean, why not, you know? We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it here in a, in a minute or two. I did not raise her to be like this. <laughs> So this is the lateral view. Um, so when I took this, our machine is supposed to automatically calibrate. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when I look at this image of the, you know, GI tract and things like that in the abdomen, I'm seeing, you know, a little bit of colon, she's got a poop, seeing a lot of that gas from the worms, but I can't see like Yeah, that's just a liver. lot of haze. Yeah, there's a lot of haze. I don't see any kidneys, you know, can't really even make out the bladder, but I don't see spleen. Spleen's usually kind of down here. And in cats, you can see that normally like yeah, really yeah. Well. Right here with her lungs. <laughs> there's there's lung here. Yeah. It's a little bit of increase in opacity, but then like all of this should be lung and it's all kind of like consolidated down, if that makes sense. And then I have a, huh. a view here. So this helps you a little bit more see so like, oh, the worm belly is obviously happening. Still don't see really liver, kidneys. I don't see anything. I just see colon, which is all this, okay. the fecal material. And then I'm just seeing a bunch of gas from the intestines. Um, and then here with the lungs, all of this right here, like all of this is consolidated lung field. Okay. So. My little love. Are we ready? Yeah, we gotta go get you combo tested. You sweet girl. Okay, so after we left the vet the other day, here's basically what happened at the vet's hospital. We got there and she did the initial exam. You saw she was concerned about the fluid in her body. A very big indicator of FIP is this fluid buildup within like abdominal cavity and even in the chest cavity. 
So that was a really big concern. Um, the other thing is she had very dilated eyes and <laughs> focus. But really she was just concerned about that fluid buildup in her abdomen. So what she did is she took some blood work and sent that off to get what's known as a FIP PCR test, meaning they're looking for the virus in her blood. Now, after talking with some other organizations and people who have successfully treated and diagnosed FIP, apparently you want to get the fluid, the actual fluid from the abdomen and send that off for the test. But little Miss Britta would not stand still long enough to do that, so we were not able to do that. So we left the vet's office that day and she said within 24 to 48 hours, we should hear back from the test. Today is Tuesday, so almost a full week past her initial vet visit, and we still have not heard back from the test. But what I did do is I went on ahead and contacted our regular vet who just happened to be out with COVID, which was why she wasn't able to initially see her. I sent her the x-rays and said, what do you think? And she said, well, based on these alone, I would suspect that. And given her diagnosis, another vet I had to take a look at the x-rays and uh, the initial vet's diagnosis and, and actually getting to feel and look at her. We went on ahead and started to seek out treatment for FIP. Now, normally when you diagnose FIP, you're gonna wanna get blood work. However, little Britta was so anemic that the blood work that they, the blood that they took for the initial blood work was basically all that they felt comfortable pulling from her at that time. So <laughs> we weren't able to run additional blood work. I'm hoping this week we'll be able to take her and her sister in and get some blood work done and get some x-rays of her sister. Just because her sister started coughing this morning and having a little bit of breathing problems. So we want to see if you know, she's got the same thing because if she does, we want to start on the treatment. Now, the treatment. It is not an FDA approved treatment, meaning that the vets cannot, what is the word, prescribe it legally. So what I did is I contacted a Facebook group called FIP Warriors and they've been wonderful. You essentially you contact the group, you get in touch with people in your area and people who have successfully walked other people through this and they get you the treatment essentially. So we are now on day, oh goodness, day four of treatment and little Miss Britta is doing so much better. You remember during her initial intake, she was having a really difficult time breathing. She is so much better now. She still coughs occasionally, but she is definitely feeling a lot better. And I even caught her playing yesterday. So yeah, we've got a good six months ahead of us. The treatment is 84 days of injections of the drug and 84 days of observation, meaning making sure it doesn't reoccur. So we've got a long road ahead of us. I hope you come on this journey with us. And what I really hope to do is I hope to kind of demystify this whole process and ho hopefully answer questions and just bring to light FIP a little bit more because, you know, even the initial vet who saw us said, you know, it is fatal, meaning that if cats don't get treatment, they generally die. And also she had heard that the treatment wasn't very successful, which is not true. It has something like a 94% success rate. So there's a lot of things that we can talk about and learn about and understand about FIP. And I would love to take my fungicational approach and walk you through it. And yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a good time. I don't know if you can hear that coughing right now, but that's her sister. So we'll probably take her in for blood work at some point here and just see. Look at how good your breathing is. Wow. You're such a good girl. Very sweet girl. Look at you. I love you. I love you.